Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to begin talking about chapter 18, which is about chemical equilibrium. So what is chemical equilibrium? So we've talked in the past about reversible reactions, and that's any chemical reaction in which the products may react to reform reactants. And so the reversible reaction is said to be in chemical equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction, and the concentration of reactants and products remain unchanged. So the types of reactions that can go and uh, become an equilibrium reaction are ones sometimes that favor the formation of the products, which is the forward reaction, but it's reversible. Sometimes reversible reactions favor the reformation of the reactants. And sometimes these reversible reactions do not favor the forward or the reverse reactions. But all three of these can achieve equilibrium. And that is, again, at the point at which both the forward and the reverse reaction are occurring at the same rate. So it looks like nothing's changing. So why does this occur? So we've talked about uh, potential energy diagrams, and this would be a potential energy diagram of an endothermic reaction. How do I know it's endothermic? Because the reactants are lower in energy than the products. And we've talked about exothermic reactions, where the reactants are higher in energy than the products. But now we can look at a situation where the difference in energy, the delta H, is not very large. And so this would be one example where, again, this one would probably favor the forward reaction a little bit, the formation of products, because they're a little bit lower in energy. And other times, there's very, very little difference in energy between the reactants and the products. And again, those reactions are likely to be reversible, and they're like, likely to, under certain conditions, reach equilibrium. So when a reaction equal, reaches equilibrium, the forward reaction continues to occur, and the reverse reaction also occurs, but they're occurring at the same rate. So if we look at this reaction, dinitrogen tetroxide, um, which decomposes to form two nitrogen dioxides, and the reverse, two nitrogen dioxides um, combine to form dinitrogen tetroxide. The state of equilibrium would be the point where both uh, reactions are taking place, the forward and the reverse, but they're occurring at the same rate. And so it would be shown like this. And what that means is that equilibrium reaches is reached and that they're occurring at the same rate. So you can think about it um, in very simplistic terms. Let's say we were in Narnia and we crossed over into Middle Earth and there was only one or two people there. And then pretty soon enough people go across to Middle Earth that they start heading back to Narnia. And when the rates are the same, equilibrium will have been reached. So if we look at this particular reaction, um, again, what's happening is the formation of products and the reformation of the reactant is occurring at the same rate and so if we were to look at the concentrations versus time here we initially um, have our concentration of dinitrogen tetroxide which is 0 0.04 molar and then we're starting out with the product nitrogen dioxide at zero and you'll see that this is decreasing and this is increasing and then all of a sudden we reach this point and that's at this time right here where their concentrations do not change and again here if we were looking at the concentrations again here the um, of the reverse reaction here nitrogen dioxide is going to then level off and the dinitrogen tetroxide in the reverse direction goes from zero and then it reaches a point where again the concentrations do not change because the forward and the reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate. So forward and reverse reaction. 
as equilibrium is approached, the concentration of the reactants will decrease and the concentration of the product will increase until equilibrium is established, at which point the concentrations of reactants and products remain constant because the forward and the reverse are occurring at the same rate. So again, if we're looking at the reaction rate and we're looking at the rate of the reverse reaction goes from zero until equilibrium and the forward reaction decreases until it reaches equilibrium and then we're at equilibrium. So as equilibrium is approached, the rate of the forward reaction will decrease. The rate of the reverse reaction increases until you reach equilibrium. And when the rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse, you have reached equilibrium. Reactions that reach a state of equilibrium are reversible reactions. That's the only way that can happen. So we talk about how we express this mathematically, and that is by something called the equilibrium constant expression. How do we describe a state of equilibrium mathematically in terms of the relative concentrations of reactants and products, and they're all going to be expressed as molarity moles per liter. After equilibrium is reached, the concentration of the products and reactants will remain constant. The ratio of their concentrations is also a constant. So the equilibrium constant expression, KEQ, is equal to the concentration of the products raised to coefficients, power of their coefficient, and the reactants raised to a power of their coefficients. So for a general reaction, AA plus BB yields CC plus DD, our equilibrium expression, KEQ, would be products on the top in the numerator, so concentration of product C raised to its coefficient C power, concentration of product D, raised to its coefficient power of D over the reactants in the denominator, concentration of A raised to its coefficient A power and concentration of B raised to its coefficient of B power. What do you gain from that? What is the equilibrium expression for something like uh, dinitrogen tetroxide going to nitrogen dioxide? So here the KEQ would be NO2 raised to the second power, that's its coefficient, and dinitrogen tetroxide uh, raised to the one. And they're all in the gas phase. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. Another example here would be dinitrogen pentoxide. And again, forming nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Notice product raised to its coefficient, product raised to its coefficient implied one and reactant raised to its power. The value of the equilibrium constant is obtained experimentally using these concentration values, and it tells you the position of the equilibrium. So if KEQ is greater than 1, then the position lies to the right. That means the products are favored because products were in the numerator. If the KEQ is less than 1, then the the equilibrium position lies to the left, which means it's less than one because the denominator is larger and reactants were in the denominator. So again, that would shift toward reactants and reactants are favored. Um, and then the KEQ equal to one, that means that the position lies in the middle. That means that neither the forward reaction nor the reverse reaction are favored. So it's in the middle. Similar amounts of reactants and products will be seen. And these are really about when something is at equilibrium, what the concentrations are going to be. Are there going to be slightly more reactants, slightly more products, or are they going to be pretty much equal, in which case the KEQ value would be 1. So to review, KEQ greater than 1, more products, KEQ less than 1, more reactants, KEQ equal to 1, same amount of each. Here is our equilibrium expression, and it's the products raised to their coefficients over the reactants raised to their coefficients. So a common misconception, the term favor in describing the position of equilibrium does not mean that the rate of the reaction 
increases for the favored direction. It's about the concentrations. Forward and reverse rates proceed at equal rates when you are at equilibrium. The term favor describes whether the concentration of product is going to be greater or the reactants will be greater. If KEQ is greater than one, in an example like this, then what that's saying is that this number is bigger, so that means that the forward reaction is favored. And if it's less than one, in the case of this reaction, again, that means this number is bigger if it's a small number. So if this number is bigger, these are reactants. That explains why um, that number is a small number. So for the next um, tutorial, we'll talk about how we actually calculate these KEQ values. And for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.